War Thunder has a long and storied history of player pushback against its developer, Gaijin, and their monetization practices. And while the backlash against the most recent economic changes in May 2023 may have been the most high profile in the game's history, it's definitely not the first and likely won't be the last. And in case anyone from Gaijin is watching this, I just wanted to say, we aren't making the weather here, we're simply responding to the breeze. And on that note, in this video, we won't be starting from the beginning, and instead starting in late 2018 with the major update 1.79 Project X, where Gaijin tried to introduce two new mechanics, pre-battle training and the modification upgrade. Starting off with pre-battle training, it was a new consumable that would improve a vehicle's performance. Mechanically, it would work a bit like an RP or SL booster, and you would activate it before a battle and it would last for the duration of said battle. You would gain different benefits depending on whether you applied it to a tank or a plane, of course, where planes would become more resistant to damage and gain increased flight performance from reduced weight. And tanks would benefit from faster repair times, crew replenishment, and fire extinguishing speed, and lesser spread on the main gun. The modification upgrades would allow you you to permanently improve an individual modification within a vehicle, and most upgrades would give a similar effect to the pre-battle training consumable, but applied permanently to a single modification. And interestingly, the crew replenishment and FPE upgrades would actually give you the ability to replenish two crew and extinguish three fires respectively. And to acquire these items, you first had to buy toolkits from the Warbond shop, which could then be crafted into either item. But that was not the only way to obtain them, of course, as Gaijin also intended to make them mechanic kits available on the marketplace, which made it a rather blatant pay-to-win feature. And the player base saw this as a thinly veiled attempt at a cash grab, which resulted in major backlash. After facing this intense criticism from the community, Gaijin quickly retracted the dev vlog and the topic hasn't been brought up since. And while the direct pay-to-win nature of these proposed features is bad, there was also one other aspect that I want to remind you of as well. Realism is a big part of War Thunder, and Gaijin leans heavily on this in their marketing material. It's something a not insignificant part of the player base also takes very seriously and takes great joy in experiencing. And it's not uncommon to find bug reports and suggestions with very high quality sources. But as always, some players take this way too seriously, given the fact that multiple classified documents multiple times have been leaked to the War Thunder forums to improve certain vehicles. But uh, I digress. The idea that Gaijin would knowingly and intentionally give a vehicle fake stats just so they could sell you a premium item really doesn't sit right with me. And just a quick note that while it is normal enough for Gaijin to adjust some stats of vehicles for balance reasons, with things like the Abrams and Leclerc reload rate, they have more or less committed to not messing with stats such as engine horsepower, turret traverse speed, armor thickness, and so on. I can't find the exact quotes right now, but I will show something in a similar vein. Anyways, back to the video. And of course, it wouldn't take very long before Gaijin found themselves in hot water once again. So with Major Update 1.71, Rank 6 tanks finally came to War Thunder and paved the way for War Thunder's expansion into modern MBTs and vehicles. The addition of higher rank tanks led to a rapidly inflating cost of modifications, which resulted in sporadic complaints from the player base. And on September 12th, 2018, Gaijin decided to address these complaints in a video titled overcoming the stock syndrome. And unsurprisingly, the video went down like a lead balloon as players really didn't appreciate being sold a solution, especially as they felt Gaijin was to blame for the high RP costs. And this of course provoked the player base and turned a relatively small issue into a major movement. And very quickly the situation festered and eventually demands for free parts and FPE modifications were relentless. Eventually, one of the co-hosts for the major update 1.81 dev stream, Sean, lost his temper and had the following outburst fbe in parts free fbe in parts like and do what guys i mean okay so we make the you know free fp in parts and then what's the point of playing the game why not give everybody a free abrams tank then some parts and how about some golden eagles and this now legendary rant resulted in a massive pr disaster for gaijin as the clip spread like wildfire and poured fuel on an already tense situation although to gaijin's credit they did eventually change things and handled it decently well after the fact. Because ever since then, you only need to unlock one tier one modification to unlock tier two, and you immediately are able to research fire protection right after parts. And of course, the RP costs for parts and FPE were significantly reduced. However, it's still a shame that Gaijin always has to be dragged kicking and screaming into doing the right thing for the players. And by 2019, most players had forgiven the developers, and Gaijin actually managed to turn the whole situation into a bit of a win by releasing the free Abrams premium pack. 
pack, which contained $60 worth of Golden Eagles and a $60 premium prototype Abrams, the XM1, which honestly is a pretty good joke about the whole free Abrams situation. And most players were pretty satisfied with this because they were just happy to pick up a discounted XM1. But unfortunately for Gaijin, their communication department must not have gotten the memo as they would make another really out of touch statement a few years later. And for those watching at home, that's called foreshadowing. And the next major controversy brings us to 2020, as some players had pointed out that it was unfair to limit the Leclerc and Type 90 to heat FS shells when stock, as other tanks had access to stock APFSDS shells. Gaijin actually addressed this in a Q&A post and promised to make some changes and make changes they did. Unfortunately for the player base, Gaijin decided to remove the stock APFSDS shells from everyone else. Well, almost everyone, in order to make the grind more fair as they, quote, could not give all nations an equal default entry APFSDS shell, end quote. And from a player's perspective, this was the absolute opposite outcome that they were looking for. Not only did it not achieve Gaijin's stated goal of making nations more equal, as the British and Swedish vehicles still retained their stock APFSDS shells, it also widened the performance gap between stock and spaded performance of a vehicle, resulting in a worse stock grind experience. And this has only gotten worse as time and updates go on and more modern vehicles are added, which have increasing levels of protection against heat FS rounds. And as if almost on schedule, in 2021, Gaijin attempted to add an expiration date to universal backups, orders, and wagers. And according to their original forum thread, the change wouldn't just affect newly received consumables, as it would also apply retroactively to existing ones that everyone owned. And once again, this resulted in pushback from both the general community and from multiple content creators. And soon after, Gaijin announced that they would be reevaluating these changes. And in the end, Gaijin postponed the introduction of timed consumables and scrapped their plans to retroactively apply a time limit to the existingly held ones. And while this may not seem as significant when compared to the previously mentioned incidents, I did still choose to include this as it shows the importance of player pushback, as without it there would be no counterbalance to Gaijin's greed. It also shows how different levels of backlash will result in different responses from Gaijin, all the way from the stock heat FS issue being basically ignored to the premium modifications being fully retracted attracted and never brought up again. And this brings us up to date with the currently unfolding controversy in May 2023. Most players will probably know this as being related to the in-game economy issues, but that's definitely not the whole picture. Just think of it like one big payback strike against Gaijin for everything they've ever done. And here's what essentially happened and is happening. So on May 4th, there was a post on the forums announcing the second part of the transition to a rank-based economy. And remember as well that these changes were voted on by players, however there was only two options in the vote, and so it's not like this is coming out of nowhere. And another quick addendum before we continue, Gaijin nerfed the base RP gain by about 5.8% in the February 2022 economy update, and they even tried to sweep the whole thing under the rug as the RP nerf was not mentioned in either the update dev blog or the associated forum post. Anyways, back to the video. However, the presentation of the plans for these updates is always very convoluted, and they continue to not translate their documents very well into English, in my opinion. They're very difficult to understand. And there's all these tables and sheets and algorithms and averages and all of this. But anyways, when these changes were introduced on May 15th, the community quickly noticed that things may not have been as they seemed, with many planes, tanks, and ships seeing increases in repair cost of up to 10,000 SL, which left many players paying tens of thousands of SL for a single death. And so without including the intricate and fuzzy details of the buildup of the player base's discontent, eventually enough buzz was generated around the idea of review bombing the game on Steam. And up until just recently, when Steam automatically removed a bunch of the reviews for being off topic, the War Thunder player base had left almost 100,000 negative reviews in a span of under 15 days. And just keep in mind that these reviews aren't just intended to slander Gaijin's name on the Steam store, since Gaijin is essentially a black box when it comes to player feedback and they seem to ignore most of it most of the time, the player base at large decided that it was necessary to send a direct and impactful message in the form of reducing War Thunder's overall review score on Steam. And Gaijin actually reacted very quickly to this because on May 18th they completely reverted the game update that included the economic changes. And included in the post reverting the changes is a statement that I think will be very interesting in the coming months. To quote it directly, we believe that the game and its changes 
should create positive emotions and that players' emotions are more important to us than calculations and numbers. But then, rather quickly, they decided to pull a 180 and shoot themselves right in the foot immediately after. Because on May 19th, a news post titled How Progression and Economy is Built in Free-to-Play Games and War Thunder in Particular, written by none other than Kirill Yudinsev, the creative director of Gaijin. And this post unfortunately addressed zero of the issues the player base had with the update, and it was 100% tone deaf and demonstrated just how unfortunately alienated and out of touch that the developers and heads of Gaijin are with their player base and their needs. And honestly, this news post could give EA's legendary Pride and Accomplishment Reddit post a run for its money, as it included many an iconic statement including you can't give a player everything at once when they happen to have a store full of $60 to $70 top tier premiums, and the total time to get to the first top vehicle should be a balanced, not too long and not too short number of game hours. And also a few words about review bombing as a method of communication, where Kirill attempted to imply that review bombing will get you nowhere, even though it made you respond to us, and will not cause any changes within the game and will even lead to the game being shut down. Which, hey, maybe you're right. Maybe it will eventually shut down, but review bombing will not be the cause of that. It will be your own immoral business practices that you continue to perpetuate without a single inclination of remorse. And they found this whole situation embarrassing enough that they removed the Steam logo from their website's footer. And then on May 23rd, they released another news post to their website titled Economy Revision, which was thankfully a much more professionally presented article than the previous responses. However, while Gaijin has pledged to fix issues with the economy within this post, actions still speak louder than words, and it's easy to make empty promises. So we'll just have to wait and see what changes Gaijin actually makes to the game in the near future, and arguably more importantly, what they choose to do in the long term once the heightened level of player scrutiny dies down as it usually does. And just maybe this unprecedented backlash will serve as a bit of a wake up call for the War Thunder team. And I know many of you aren't very optimistic and honestly, I can't fault you given Gaijin's track record. And of course, there are still plenty of other examples that I could have mentioned, such as the slow gutting of the battle pass rewards and giving players negative premium time balance when they drop the ball with the rollout of a bonus link promotion. But just like the coastline paradox, the deeper you look, the more you'll find, and I can't possibly cover everything in one video. 